completely tuned to watch this podcast because we have a special guest. A special guest who is a renowned preacher, who is a full-time Catholic evangelist who travels around the globe spreading the word of God with a great fire and zeal to serve Christ. And he's also the director and the founder of Spread Your Wings Ministry in India, Bangalore. So join me in welcoming our special guest today, that is Brother Colin Calviano. So thank you, Brother Colin, for joining us today on this podcast. Yeah. And Most uh, welcome. Happy to be so with you. Yes, we are also very excited to hear from you. Our um, topic that we've chosen is uh, faith versus fear. Uh, now that okay. so many... Now that so much is going on uh, around the globe, yeah. everyone mm-hmm. is affected in one way or the other, either our work life or our loved one's life with uh, health or uh, any other situation. All of us are stuck. All of us, are, uh, we wonder, okay, what is next? We worry. Um, also, we try to calm ourselves down uh, with um, with praying or, you know, with, by reading the word of God. But still, there are times that, uh, you know, th- there's a, co- a constant thought in our head, you know, a constant worry in our head. So times like this, we really, really need to wake up and, uh, you know, to do something more than what we just regularly or casually do in our life. So on behalf of the Oman Youth team, we have like few questions listed out to ask okay. you if you can just sh- share uh, what is your perspective on that and how you can guide us through. Okay. Um, so... Uh, we, we say that our God is known to be a God of miracles. Because okay. uh, when we read the word of God, we, we ponder on God's miracle and God has come in so many different ways and done things that our minds don't understand right now. When we look back, oh, how did God help them? How did God uh, do such a miracle? But how do we trust him even when we cannot see his hand during times like this? Uh, Archana, for me, it is, uh, you see, that's why it is so important for us, uh, young as we are, I'm talking to the youths, right? Young as we are, to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. You know, <clears throat> why I'm saying this is, faith is not like a switch or a button. In a crisis time, I, I press the switch. Then everything is okay, it's off. Then suddenly one more crisis, I put on a switch. It does not work like that. Yes. Faith is a journey and faith is a relationship with your maker. Yes. So what is important is in our journey is, you see, Jesus said in the gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verse 36, what does it profit a man Mm -hmm. if he gains the whole world and lose his own soul? Mm -hmm. Fear comes when you are not very sure Mm. of where you're going, Mm. why God made you, your identity in the Lord, what is your future, what is going to happen when after someone dies. You know, when when all these questions are there and unanswered, Mm -hmm. fear will grip your heart because what brings fear is all these kind of questions, unanswered questions, unresolved questions. These questions can be resolved only when you repose your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and turn to his word. Yes. That is very important for us, you know. Otherwise, what will happen is, you see, also it depends on what you're feeding your mind with. True, very true. Okay. If you feed your mind with only all the negative reports, all the channels you're listening, all the newspaper, since we are under lockdown, you must be having a lot of time. Everybody must be having a lot of time. You cannot go out. You must be reading all the newspapers, all the channels. Every channel today, at least in India, every channel is uh, reporting only this COVID-19, COVID-19. Full. I have turned off my uh, television. Yes. No use watching it. True. Because my feeling is, Archana, if anything is bringing fear into your heart, mm-hmm. anxiety into your heart, causing panic for you, then you better switch it off. It's not going to help you. That's why I tell even people, uh, even in uh, WhatsApp messages, no? some people keep a count. How many people have died today? Yes. Total number of people who have died. <laughs> this is not good news. Why are you sending this? Rather, you send messages of faith, message of hope, message of encouragement, so that you can lift the spirit of the person. Yes. And that is very important. Yes. So God is a God of miracles. 
he continues to be a god of miracles but it is for you and for me to put our faith in the lord because see in hebrews 11 verse 1 the word of god says mm -hmm. faith is the substance of things hoped for mm -hmm. the evidence of things not seen so there is this dimension of faith mm -hmm. where we put our repose in the lord we put our faith in the lord but the evidence of things are not seen as yet for example, youth, many lot of youth will be praying for marriage or they'll be praying for their future. Yeah. And God is saying, yeah, I have a wonderful future for you. Yeah. My plans for you are for welfare, not for destruction. Now it comes for me to trust the Lord with that word that God has the best in store for me Amen. and have hope. Yes. Faith must bring hope, right? Faith, yes. hope and love, said St. Paul. So faith must generate hope. This is the trust I have. God has something good in store for me all i need to do is trust my maker my maker god that is jesus christ will not mislead me will not give me a false promise he'll not deceive me what he has promised he will do see that is important for us yes. and when we have that kind of faith in the lord then he will reward you he will reward your faith because Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, you know, without faith, it is impossible to please God. You see, it is not easy to please God without this dimension of faith. Faith is the relationship again with God. Yeah. But it also says, he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So God will reward you for putting your faith in the Lord. His reward is there for each one of us. Reward will be about your future, about what you're praying for. It's your marriage, it's your work, it's finances. Tomorrow it's your children. So God is in control we have to let god be god the problem comes is when we try to act as god we, we we become god for our lives we decide what to do we decide what we can do and then everything doesn't seem to be going the way it should go and then we blame god <laughs> many people yeah. blame god actually they should give them a little bit of credit we do the mess we, we do the mess and then we blame god yeah. So what is important for us to realize, I think this uh, situation also is very good, isn't it? Uh, a good in the sense for us to introspect, to reflect on our relationship with Jesus. How is my relationship with Jesus? Do I have a personal relationship with Jesus? Is Jesus my friend? Do I talk to him? Do I t share with him all that is going within me? And then the Lord will open, hold our hands. He's given us his Holy Spirit who will hold our hands, journey with us. He's a comforter, right? We know that the Holy Spirit is a comforter. So in a, uh, in a time if there is concern, if there is, a, say, uh, fear, if there is anxiety about losing a job or a uh, financial situation not going to be bad, see, the Holy Spirit is a comforter. We turn to Him. When you turn to Him, He'll comfort you. Yes. But when you don't turn to Him and try to solve it on your own, looking to man to solve it for you, I think we are getting into a deeper trouble, you know. It's a yes. vicious circle. Yeah. It's a vicious circle. Yeah. So there is a time to let go and let God take control, control of our lives. Yes. I guess that's one thing that we don't do at all. Because if I have a situation or if I have a problem, the first thing, I don't really go to God. I end up calling my friend and I'll be like sharing with my friend, you know what, this happened with me and I have no idea how could this happen to me or why this happened to me. Okay. And then you, you tend to be quite dramatic about the whole situation. I mean, sometimes it is very difficult. You do need a friend to talk to. But... Um, even after all that, the real question is, do we come back to God? Do we sit with Jesus and do we have that conversation? I don't think uh, on a, it, it is, it is quite a struggle for us to just come back and like, um, uh, you know, find God in situations like this. And like, when you, when you seek God, uh, when you want to understand his voice, when you want to understand how God is guiding us, even in times like this, uh, we are sitting at home and um, not knowing what's tomorrow. There is this time of waiting. There is this time where we are, we pray, but we wait. But in this waiting time, how do we uh, get more closer to God? How do we grow uh, closer to Jesus? Because the foundation and how we build uh, that foundation with Jesus is everything. When that foundation is set, I know no matter what happens, I know God is with me. But then building this formation is also a struggle. So for a lot of us youth, we definitely find this um, really, really challenging. So if you can just help us how to build that foundation. Yeah.
uh, you know, uh, for me, it is. Uh, let me just share how this lockdown has also helped me. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I'm grounded, right? Yes. Uh, so there's not much travel, but I've used this time really constructively. Yes. I use this time to you know uh, up my time of prayer. Uh, my prayer life has uh, increased threefold. Mm-hmm. You know, praying. I'm doing a lot of online sessions. Mm-hmm. I'm doing Bible study. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, I'm getting time because of this lockdown to listen to other people's teachings. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so you feed your soul. You see, you need to feed your because sometimes you know. Uh, our soul can be parched and you know, it can be dry, it can be like a desert and only the word of God mm-hmm. can water it, refresh it and then again uh, it will be a springtime in your life. It's a matter of time, isn't it? You get a springtime in your life. Sure. So if anybody wants to uh, set a good foundation in the Lord, I think this is the right time to do it. You know, uh, we are all alone. Second thing is, uh, what I'm saying all alone means we don't have to go to work and you know we don't have the hassle of uh, uh, traveling to our uh, places of work so we save a lot of time but I think uh, what is important is also to be wise you know Ephesians mm-hmm. chapter 5 uh, verses uh, verse 18 verse 18 uh, 17 and 18 says don't be like the unwise foolish mm-hmm. be wise and make the best of every opportunity we must seize these kind of opportunities evaluate our lives reflect on our lives, see where we stand in our relationship with God and, uh, and we can always re, uh, re, uh, rebuild our foundation. So I, my feeling is, uh, I was giving a talk, you know, there's a talk in my YouTube, Arshina, I recommend them to listen to it called yes, really. Rebuild Your Life. You know, how to rebuild your life. See, the thing is, we have to do, see some things, uh, Arshina, maybe it may sound like repetition. Mm but you cannot help it they are the foundation pillars mm. right uh, they are non-negotiable <laughs> uh, for example uh, how to build your life in the lord it's time to commit your life to god and to start spending some time in prayer some time in prayer you know start a relationship with the lord it's not very difficult to start a relationship with jesus mm. with your friend you know <coughs> excuse me Start your relationship with the Lord, pray more. And, uh, you know, if you have the, I'm just saying, you know, pray more. Uh, just get something going so that there's a two-way communication between you and your maker, you know. And that will refresh your heart. That will bring hope to you. See, hope will come only most of the time. Hope uh, There is no hope or there is hopelessness when there is this unknown. Mm. We just don't know anything. Where are, what is life all about, you know. Mm. And this unknown itself can create fear. Yes. We don't need a virus to create fear. <laughs> the unknown will create fear for you. Yes. There are so many unanswered questions in our life. So yes. prayer is one of those things. Of course, scripture, isn't it? Yes. We must read God's word diligently, right? Uh, I, I wanted to recommend to the youth, you know, to read the New Testament, not the Gospels, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. To read the Gospels and move on to the New Testament. Because Jesus said in John uh, 6, 63, he said, the words I speak to you, they are spirit and life. So one is, it will regenerate your spirit. It will bring your spirit alive, you know. And second thing is to bring life. We are all looking for life. And Jesus has this life. He said in John 10, 10, I come that you may have life and life in all its abundance and all its fullness. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is the life giver. Mm -hmm. He is the life giver. He came, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. You see, I am the way, the truth and the life. So life is in Christ. Mm -hmm. So read the word of God. Yes. The other thing is, you know, uh, we are, of course, now we are under lockdown. We, uh, now we don't have the sacramental life, but mm-hmm. uh, at some point of time, uh, the lockdown is going to go. We're not going to be permanent like this, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, we use the sacraments. We are Catholics to make sure we uh, uh, frequent the Eucharist, frequent confession, belong to a youth group. You see, uh, very often we think this is not necessary. Mm-hmm. People, Some people only concentrate on their vertical relationship with God. They mm-hmm. forget uh, their uh, horizontal relationship. But Christianity is a community. Yeah. I grew in the Lord because I belong to a youth group and a prayer group all my life. Even today, even today, mm-hmm. I still belong to a Catholic community. Mm-hmm. I'm a member of the Catholic community. Yes, I am a, one of the leaders, but I'm a member of the community. Yes. Because without the brothers and sisters in the Lord, it is mm-hmm. very hard mm-hmm. to walk with the Lord. It's very hard to walk with the Lord. Yes. And so this is very, very important for us, you know. If you notice in the Acts of the Apostles, Arjuna, how did the early Christians 
uh, grow in the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. They were timid. Mm -hmm. They denied Jesus. Mm -hmm. But now after Pentecost, life changes. And after Pentecost, they started coming into groups, household groups, praying. They did four things. In Acts chapter 2, verse 42, it says, mm -hmm. they did four things. What did they do? They devoted themselves. I like that word devoted. That means they committed themselves. You see, what is lacking also today is commitment, right? Mm. It's so hard to get people <laughs> to a prayer meeting. So hard, so hard. Yeah. yeah? How many youth must be there in uh, in the in your parish, right? How many youth? But how many will come? 10, 15, 20, 30 maximum. Yeah. yeah. You see, there's a lack of commitment there. Yeah. yeah? But they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, the word of mm -hmm. God, to fellowship, that is to, you know, uh, prayer group or youth group, to mm -hmm. breaking of the bread, Eucharist and sacraments, and to prayer. Yes. Because they did this, they anchored their life so well in the Lord, mm -hmm. and the Lord prepared them for the future. True. So we used to call in our early days these four things, mm -hmm. the word of God, uh, fellowship, <laughs> Eucharist, and prayer, the anchors, the four mm -hmm. anchors in the Christian life. Because, mm. you know, when a ship comes to port, mm. they anchor it. Mm. One reason they anchor it is because it will not drift up again into the high seas. True. So if you anchor yourself in the Lord, you will not drift away. And I did these four things, Achana, mm. consistently, even today, of course, consistent yeah. in my life. I'm anchored so well, I never backseat. Yeah. So that is the power of it now. You will anchor well, you'll be rooted in the Lord. Tomorrow if a crisis comes, a storm comes, an issue comes, an illness comes, your house will not collapse. Your life will not collapse because it is rooted on the and yeah. built on the uh, rock. Yes, that, that, that was uh, something so beautiful that you covered so many topics together. Uh, but you know, as a, as a youth, when I listen to uh, you know the word of God, or when I watch the Holy Mass, when I go to church, when I come back, and when we go to retreat centers and we come back, we're all alive. You know, we are like, yes, I'm going to be filled with that spirit. Yes, I'm going to be, you know, go back. I'll read the word of God. I will do this. I'll evangelize, and you know, and you're you're full yeah. of you're full of life. But then there comes a point again, you know, the same, the same way, like you said, commitment. It's a most important thing that we don't have in our lives right now. We commit to uh, a lot of things and um, sometimes our life is so busy. We don't know what to say yes to and we don't know what to say no to. We get like so choked up with uh, too many plans happening. And also I, um, I have personally struggled with this and I know a lot of youth also struggle with this. We listen to word of God. We pray. But then there's something that we don't do. That is true surrender. You know, uh, when we don't give our situations to God, when we don't give our problems to God, yes, I seek you, God. Yes, I want answers, God. But when uh, when I don't truly surrender, you know, how does that impact a person? Yeah, um, you know, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, mm -hmm. the word of God says, cast all your cares upon him, he cares for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see what I am trying to say, you know, uh, Archana. There comes a time in our lives where we must realize that we cannot handle life anymore. <laughs> it's too much for us. Yeah. It's too much for us. Yeah. And that's why here is Jesus who is coming and making this invitation in, in Matthew 11, verse 28, 29, and 30. He says, come to me, all you labor, every lady. I will give you rest. Sure. Now in this time, how many people are going through fear, mm -hmm. but still they are not coming to the Lord. If they come to the Lord, they will get rest. They will get peace. There will be no fear. But yet, people are not willing to surrender and commit their life to God. So, it is like, you know, uh, what is important is to make sure that we hand over our lives to Jesus. You know, hand it over to Him and say, Lord, uh, I give you the reins of my life. I am tired of, you know, handling my own life, making my own independent decisions, going my own way, and trying so many other things. Now is the time for me to say, Lord, you are the judge of my life. You please take uh, control of, uh, take the reins of my life. Yes. And that is important. Yes. Surrender is all about saying yes to God's call, isn't it? Yes. It is not only about giving up something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mary, when, uh, when the angel came to Mary, what did Mary say? Yes. She said, be done to me according to thy will. Yes. So surrender is saying, yes, God is telling us, commit our life to you. My, my, your future is in my hand. Your life is in my hand. And all we need to say, yes, Lord, I trust you. Yes, surrender. Absolute surrender. Yes. So what is important for us is 
getting the yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> making sure we can say yes. In all our prayer, if we don't respond to the voice of God, mm. then it is really, uh, you know, futile praying. True. Yeah, yeah. When God speaks to your heart and to my heart, what must I do? Respond to the Lord yes. by saying a yes to the Lord. And that is yes, yes. That is very important for us. Yeah. Yes, I completely agree with you that uh, we do say yes, but then we also say conditions apply. You know, uh, we don't completely surrender, but then uh, as you spoke to us, we will, we will, uh, you know, uh, make God. A, we will make the word of God our foundation in our lives and we will continue in this beautiful journey. No matter how many times we fall, we always know that we have a loving God. It's okay even exactly. if we and fall secure. back. Yes. Doesn't matter what so calling, beautifully. Right? Yes, yeah. Yes. I mean, yes. uh, personally, in my life also, I've experienced where um, I was uh, doing so many things at one time and I wasn't really giving my entire time to God. I was like, oh, I can go to church, I can go to work, I can probably like go here, go there. It was just so crowded. But then coming back home and then giving that personal time with Jesus and that prayer time is the only thing that has made me who I am today. And uh, that has been a beautiful, beautiful journey. But also... Um, as we are approaching Pentecost feast. And uh, so I would just uh, ask you to tell us as to how we can prepare ourselves. We must have been in a different uh, way. We have fallen apart. We're picking ourselves up. We are in this journey. And uh, what are those uh, things as a youth? It's a must do. Uh, for me, again, I mean, I said, uh, what are the things that must do is these four anchors. Yes. You know, because they are non-negotiable, I feel. Yeah, they are non-negotiable because as long as you do these four anchors, four truths, what is going to happen in our lives is we're going to get anchored in the Lord. Mm -hmm. We will be anchored in the Lord. And yes. <laughs> believe me, I have done it for the last 44 years and nothing can shake you like long yes. because you're well anchored. Yeah, how to prepare for Pentecost? It's very important feast for us, the feast of the church, the birthday of the church, the birthday for every single Catholic. Is to really prepare the way we prepare for anyone else's birthday party. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, make sure you you know uh, this uh, this place is uh, the the feast is important for you. Uh, uh, you know, start praying to the Holy Spirit more. Make a you know try to go uh, go to you. See today, uh, we should thank God for technology, right? Yes. Oh, today we can. I mean, imagine what is uh, we, uh, everything is at our disposal. You can just go on YouTube, find some uh, talks on the Holy Spirit, listen to it. You know, yes, we should be discerning. You know what to listen. We need to be discerning. But at the same time, we can listen to. There are a lot of harmless teachings. In the sense, when I say harmless teaching, means not uh, controversial, not doctrinal. No, mm. there are so many talks like that on the Holy Spirit. If you can listen to it, because uh, you know. Getting into a relationship with the Holy Spirit also is important, you know, Very and that's true. Pentecost. Pentecost students just come and we have a night vigil and next day we are all again back to square one, <laughs> you know, <laughs> as you said, you know, like coming back from a retreat full height, going for the vigil and tomorrow we forgot what to do. We don't want to end up there, you know, yes. we want to make sure that's why a relationship is important. Again, in the retreat also, as you said, you can go to a retreat and come back, but if you don't commit your life to the Lord at the retreat, don't surrender your life at the Lord at the retreat. You just have a good uh, high experience, yeah, you know? a nice kick if you like to call it, nice high experience. Then when you come down, it's just going to wear off. Matter of time, that experience, that feeling, that emotion is going to wear off, and you're going to be back to square one. So that is very important for our youth to make for our youth, you know, uh, is to make sure that we really know the Lord, and that's why in catechism we say to know Him, to love Him, and to serve. Him. And those are three basic things that keep going in your life. Uh, I believe uh, the Holy Spirit will take control of our lives and, you know, uh, we can be truly good witnesses, 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 wherever God takes us. Thank you so, so much, Brother Colin. That was amazing. So powerful. I am really charged of listening to this. Thank you so, so much again. On behalf of the entire Oman youth, I would like to say thank you once again for coming with us on this podcast and sharing all of these beautiful things. And uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, my privilege, Ashina. Thank yeah. you for having me on this interview. And uh, I want to say hi to all the youth of uh, Oman. 
and uh, we will see again soon god bless you that was brother calling you guys i hope you all enjoyed it because i was so beautiful and powerful right to watch more of his videos you can always go ahead and subscribe to his channel we'll be putting up a link in the description please do subscribe like and share thank you so much for joining us today bye